Let's read the last chapter of Socks by Beverly Cleary. Chapter seven is called Socks and Charles William. Socks soon discovered once his bed and dish had be been returned to their old place in the laundry room, that being inside the house with Charles William was quite different from watching him through the window. Charles William had grown out of his morning nap, and whenever Socks was in the room, he was no longer content to stay in his pen playing with brown bear or with his plastic ball filled with sloshing plastic fish. The minute his mother set him down inside the pen, he began to fuss. So that's the little plastic toy that she, he's been talking about and a little playpen with all of his toys and socks way out here. If his mother ignored his fussing, he clung to the bars and howled. His playpen bored him and he wanted out. If the cat, cat was out, he should be out too. Hmm. All this howling and shaking of the bars worried Socks, who sat beside the playpen like the Sphinx, with his paws flat in the front, staring at the only human being he knew who was anywhere near his own size. The louder Charles William cried, the more uneasy Socks became, until finally he ran meowing to Mrs. Bricker to tell her that he must do something to stop the crying. Mrs. Bricker always gave in. All right, you two, she said, as she lifted her son out of the pen and set him on the carpet. You win. She was careful never to leave Socks and the baby alone when Charles William was outside his playpen. Charles William was into everything. He tried to chew <laughs> the cord of the lamp until his mother came running to pry it out of his fingers and to unplug the lamp. He crawled into the laundry room and threw Socks' dry food all over the floor. Mrs. Bricker started serving Socks' meals on top of the uh, dryer. Charles William pulled magazines off the coffee table with a slam that woke Socks with a start. He cried when his mother would not let him taste the dead moths he found. He sat in his high chair yelling, I die, die, into his cup because he could make more noise that way. He stuffed his mouth with cottage cheese and blew it over the kitchen for his mother to wipe up. He pulled pans out of the cupboards and banged them on the floor, a sound most disturbing to a cat's sensitive ears. When given an educational toy, three wooden rings to fit on a peg, he threw away the rings, grabbed the peg as if it were an axe, and pounded on the floor with it. Do you have any babies at your house? Are they always bothering you? Are they throwing things around and screaming for attention and spitting their food everywhere? Everywhere? That's, they like to do that. Most of all, Charles William delighted in crawling after Socks. Tiki, he said hopefully. Tiki. Socks came to accept that his new name is Tiki. Let the Brickers call him Tiki, and all they earned was a look of contempt. So it was okay. He understood that Charles William was going to call him Tiki, but if Mr. and Mrs. Bricker tried to, he would look at them like, mm. Pet the kitty gently, said Mrs. Bricker, when Charles William reached for Socks's tail. Socks learned to put up with Charles William, and when necessary, to escape under the table where he was fenced in by the chair's legs. See, the kitty is tired, said Mrs. Bricker to Charles William when Socks had ran to safety. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. Bricker was the one who was tired. Miss uh, Charles William was not only an active baby, he was growing heavier and lifting him in and out of his high chair or onto the table in his room where his diapers were changed was tiring to his mother. In the afternoon, after she put Charles William down in his crib with his bottle and brown bear for his nap, 
Mrs. Bricker kicked off her sandals and fell asleep on the couch in the living room. There was nothing Socks enjoyed so much as a warm body to lean against while he washed. But as soon as he settled himself against Mrs. Bricker and was grooming himself with long, hard licks, pausing to chew the rough spots, she pushed him to the floor. Socks, please, she said, be a good cat. All the licking is making her stay awake and she wants a little rest. In a moment, Socks was back, a leaning against the exhausted mother, licking, chewing, and occasionally scratching until his fur was sleek and his paws were snowy. Mrs. Bricker, who knew when she was beat and was too tired to protest, slept. And after a few minutes of purring, so did Socks. One afternoon, when Mrs. Bricker had put Charles William in his crib for a nap, Socks jumped down from the top of the dryer where he had been crunching dry cat food. He was passing the baby's room on his way to join Mrs. Bricker on the couch as Charles William heaved his bottle out of his crib. The top, which he had managed to twist, came off. Mm, and the sight of all the milk spilling across the floor caught Socks' attention. Yum. <laughs> Socks went to investigate. And although this, the milk was ordinary milk instead of the formula he once had enjoyed, he crouched and licked until Ch while Charles William watched. When Socks had finished and was tidying his whiskers, whiskers, Charles William got on his hands and knees and began to rock his crib as if he wanted to show what he could do. The crib began to move. Charles William rocked harder. The crib slid across the bare floor to the door, which Charles William was able to reach out to and push shut, an accomplishment that pleased him. He rocked some more past the door until the crib touched the wall and blocked the door. He shut himself and the cat inside the bedroom by himself, and now he's blocked the door with the crib. Socks looked up at Charles William and meowed. How is he going to get out with the door shut? Charles William was delighted to have the cat speak to him personally. This was something new. Socks meowed again. He did not want to be shut in the bedroom when he was supposed to be napping in the living room. Charles William wanted to amuse the cat. He worked at a crack in his plastic-covered crib bumper, tearing at it until he pulled out a bit of cotton, which he threw out between the bars of the, his crib. With alert eyes, Socks watched the fluff floating toward the floor. A second fluff followed, and a third Socks leaped to clap it between his paws as if it were a butterfly. The baby laughed and tossed out a bigger piece of cotton. Socks leaped for that one too, dropped it, and batted it across the floor. Now the crack in the plastic was big enough so that Charles William could get both of his small hands into it. He pulled out gob after gob of cotton for the cat's amusement. Take a look. So this is the bumper that they're talking about. It goes around the edge of the crib so the baby doesn't bump its um, head on the bars. But um, look, he's tearing into it. And there's socks. What fun he's having. He's... Socks leaped and pounced and raced in a wild ballet, skidding through what was left of the milk rolling over with cotton in his paws while Charles William laughed and poured out, uh, pulled out more cotton. Socks leaped for that too, pleased to play with the fluffy stuff, pleased to entertain an admiring audience. Faster and faster, Socks raced and leaped. Charles William screamed with laughter. Milk everywhere. Socks heard the sound of Mrs. Bricker hurrying down the hall in her bare feet but he paid no attention. Charles William was silent when he heard the doorknob turn and Socks paused to pant. He's been working a lot. He's been running a lot. 
Mrs. Bricker tried to open the door, but she could not because of the crib. Oh, she cried and rattled the door. Charles William, are you all right? She asked as if she expected him to answer. Then after a pause, she added, Socks, are you in there? Charles William's attention returned to the torn crib bumper. On with the game. Handfuls of cotton snowed down from the crib for socks, and Charles William laughed harder than he had ever laughed in all of his ten months. The door rattled again. Charles William, what are you doing? Mrs. Mrs. Bricker's voice was frightened. His mother could not get in. Charles William found this development so funny that he laughed even harder. He stuck out his tongue and blew. He found his new noise hilarious. Oh, what am I going to do? Mrs. Bricker asked herself and ran down the hall in her bare feet. In a moment, Sox heard her running out the back door, and in another moment, he saw her face above the window sill. Oh, I better stop there, and we'll read the rest of chapter seven, the end of the book, and you'll hear the end of it later uh, tomorrow, okay?